Right. Well, this is the picture that we're going to be working on today. And the very obvious problem is we have this rather lacy tree against a very dark background. Uh, fear not, the, we have ways. Uh, what I've done first is to make a very brief indication on this paper as to where these various elements are. In particular, the waterfall, this leaning tree, this upright tree and its position next to that one, this area here. I've made a note of where the water line is of this little promontory and the water line at the back. Be careful, it's level with the bottom of the waterfall, not level with this light streak running across here. The other thing I decided to do was to make more of this area here to balance the color that we have over here so that we don't get a picture of two halves, light and dark. Right, so I'll proceed. Now what I'm going to do today is to do the light area. I'm going to do the trees and this cleft up here and an indication of the waterfall uh, and the bush here and put something in the water here. So I won't actually be working on the dark part today. Reason for that is the light part needs to be absolutely dry before you put any of the dark bits in. Okay, so I'm gonna make a green. Um, and just recently I seem to be favoring using Viridian, which if you remember, gives you that very bright color. Um, and I'm making quite a bit of it. And then I'm mixing with that uh, because I want it bright and it's in the foreground, I'm going to mix Indian yellow. So again, I'm turning the brush in the paint. Incidentally, I wet the ones I'm going to use before I even open the class so that I will be able to pick up paint from these pans, which are a bit difficult. Now you see the addition of that little bit of green, of yellow, has changed the the look of the yellow, but it's still uh, of the green, but it's still not bright enough for what I want. This is a very bright spring green. Doesn't matter too much if I get the yellow dirty, because I'll only be using it to make the green, I think. Let's see what colour. There we are. That gives me that colour. I think it still isn't light enough. So uh, I'm going to do what I should have done. Start with the yellow. Here's the yellow. And put it in here. I keep forgetting this. If you're making a colour, start with a light colour and add the darker one. If what you want is a fairly, fairly bright colour. If you want a dark colour, really dark green like when I or a really dark purpley color when I start to work on the background I'll start with a dark color first and just add the light as and how I need it. I'm going to pick up a bit of that green and add it in there. That, that's about the color that I want I think. As you see it's quite a bright color. Now I'm going to take that color and work across the whole of this area here in uh, a light movement, just to give me the shape of what I want to just add a little touch more water to that. It comes down here, it comes down here. Wouldn't matter if I went over um, the dark part, because uh, that, that's going to be put in afterwards. And it's also around here. Put 
There we are. I could add a little bit down here because I'm going to be um, working with the greens along here. And I could even bring a bit of it coming down from here. Now, I'm going to pick, rinse your brush, I'm going to pick up some of the darker colour that I have and start to just mark in. where I want the dark bits to be. I want it to, to look varied. Where's the music coming from, Rachel? I've got Andra Schiff on in the background. Oh, right. That's I should okay. probably turn it down, otherwise YouTube would get chippy. So I will, I'm sorry if you're going to lose it. This doesn't have to look terribly real at this stage. You can always do something with it afterwards. This basically an undercoat, I think, is what you would you would call it. And we might want to get a bit more um, precise here because these are tending to be a bit uh, it doesn't desperately matter if they're too thick. I can always cut them back when I'm using the um, the dark. Um, paint to define some of the areas. What I'm doing basically is uh, dressing the area as best I can. I think we ought to get this sandy colour in. So I'm going to take in a little um, raw sienna and put that in here. Marginally different tone to what's already there. Bit in there. And of course that's going to come down to into the water. Right, now if we're going to dress that properly, we need to make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to add two dirty pots. I don't think the green is helping. I'm going to add a bit of brown to it now just to uh, to make it a little bit darker in places. Well, this is going to walk a bit because the paint I'm putting it in is dry. Uh, we've got a Now those are trunks are much lighter than what I have here at the moment. I want to put in a bit of dark here. Here. Okay. Don't want this to be too dark, otherwise my dark dark won't show up as very dark. I just want to give enough weight to the bottom of the, uh, the clumps, so to speak. To, uh, to show that there, there's a sort of feel about the thing. And if you're going to do these spiky things, try to make them up of three or four different colours, bearing in mind they'll be very much darker near the bottom where all the um, grasses clump together before they before they shoot out. And along the bottom here, 
Nó chưa nghe. a little bit of brown just to tice it along a bit which is good this comes up around here more of shape She's looking rather nice. Now this sedge is a bit hard. I don't like that. I'll just give it a little bit of something to rinse your brush. Put on a damp brush. If you make it very wet, you get a cauliflower. Just make it damp. That edge I want, so that's fine. It's quite important because I can put it back. There we are. Now, I want these trunks to be lighter than this rather heavy orangey brown I used down here. So I'm going to use um, umber. I think, I think this is uh, raw umber that I've got here. It's, it's just got a little less heat in it than the, um, that one. Can you see, that's a ready one. And this has just not got the red in it. So it, um, it gives a nice pale shape. These are trunks are catching the light. So I'm just putting those in, in this umber shade, being fairly, gross about it because I'm going to cut them back when I uh, put the dark surface in. And there's a sort of much of that colour there and a bit of there. Th these are all, if you like, almost underground colours. Now, while I've got those colors, I'm going to add something to this area up here. I'm going to make it more than uh, the part in the picture. I'm going to start off with, I think, the umber. Uh, to, to just create a shape to work into there. Again, it doesn't matter too much what edge I get here because I'll be cutting back into it with, um, with the dark paint when I get there. And that's also got some of the lighter green. In it, round about here. It's fairly blurred. It's not. It's not very distinct. What's going on up here? And again, just some of the darker bits. Um, And the waterfall is the other feature that we need to look at. Now, the, the water is in shadow. So it's going to be tumbling down here. It's about here. And again, it's not doesn't matter too much the sort of shape I'm going to get as long as I if I get it reasonably accurate, it does make the painting of the rest of the picture a bit easier to cope with. Ah, that's a bit too much like a tent. 
again, it doesn't desperately matter if I've got it wrong. Because uh, the, the dark will sort that out when we come to it. So more or less that shape. Now, what does that, that's done is to give me the basic shape of where the light is, where the waterfall is, and where that um, area of light is up there in the cleft. Um, so I'm going to carry on now and put some work in on the water. I'm going to start with the burnt umber. Come on, Daddy. Um, and and put in what I can see and again this is more or less undercoat that I'm putting on here I'm putting on the lighter color first so that when I come to work on top of it with the darker color uh, I've got some colorful area to leave now, if we take this across here, and I can take this blue uh, over here because there are is aspects of the blue. You might not know it, but there's crocodiles in this water. This is um, one of the um, lakes we were taken to um, when we were in Darwin in Australia, Northern Australia. And um, it's got freshwater crocodiles in. And uh, they aren't the man-eaters that the big sorties are. And people actually went in and swam in the water. I didn't, but I think my swimming days in big pools are over now. So I won't get excited about that. Bring that across there. I think I can bring some areas of green in here. Oh, uh, you want it to more or less uh, mimic what's up above. Not to any great extent, but uh, enough to, to give you the shape that you want. Now, again, this is just almost underpainting. It's going to be defined by the dark when, when we get that far. This is more or less dry. So now, if you remember last week's lesson with the sponge, if I pick up some of the color there, this one, No point in doing it where I'm going to put the dark. But if I put it here, it will. Now I've got a repeat. I somehow I've got a bit of red on it, which is not good. I 
I can do that. Right. Now then, I'll take that. And I make the raw umber a little bit darker. I can get some kind of um, feeling for what's what's in here. Toys are a bit clumsy. Let's try with a smaller brush. Keep forgetting I've got smaller brushes. Now if I cut back into this, it's still too I cut back into this with uh, the paint isn't dry enough. That's not going to work either. So I'll block that out. Sort of temporarily. Right, come on, girl, get a bit of work done. Now, if you roll the brush, I should be able to get quite a fine point on it. See so how we're we doing. Oh, that's better. Just want them to suggest. Uh, but there's something, something going on. I'm not quite sure what's going on in there. So let's need a little bit of. It's all looking a bit monumental around here, so I'll thin it down a bit. The answer was thicker paint. Um, with the smaller brush, it just gives you that little bit of um, extra help to get what you want. Some kind of branch up here. And if I can get them in. It's easier to go around than if they're already there. Well, bear in mind this is half, less than half finished. Anywhere. Those edges are far too sharp there, so I've rinsed the brush. I've got a damp brush here, and I'm running the damp brush down the edge there. This is what you need to do to soften those um, places where you want the thing to merge rather than display. Right. I think we can probably do a bit more work on the waterfall. And again, um, that's far too thick. Well, that'll help to start with. There's a, there's a bit of rock here. That's Yeah, 
not. Ten minutes. Ten. I think I thought it was less than that. Okay. Right. Okay. Not to worry. But what I'm trying to do is create lights and darks here to create the effect of the waterfall. It won't look much like a waterfall till I get the uh, the background in. So basically, what I'm doing is using the color to create light and shade on the water, um, which it is itself also in, also in shade. So it's not going to show white uh, anywhere. And again, if I damp that, can sort of whisking the paint with a, a practically dry brush. It, it just adds to the general effect of wateriness. There's some rather nice colors over here too. Don't know if I've got time to do those yet. If we take that blue, let's see what happens when you add a bit of that to it. You get a sort of grey, okay. There's a sort of grey area here. This isn't water, it's, uh, it's rock. I just want to give it a sort of uh, water to uh, give any, any light bits I leave some colour while we're at it. Right, I think that is going to be greatly improved when we when we get the darks in, but uh, we're not we're not ready for them yet. So, bear in mind when you're doing this, I'll stop there. Uh, what you're doing is trying to recreate the sort of airy lightness here which is going to be thrust forward when all this white paper turns dark. And this has to be absolutely dry before I do that. Um, I think that that's going to be how it is for today. All right, darling. Okay, then. Um, so we actually have a little bit of time. So, um, if anyone has a question, you can unmute yourself and ask it. You have five minutes. Can I ask which blue it was, Steve? Is it is it ultramarine? Yes, it's ultramarine. Ultramarine, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought it went better with the uh, the colours I've got there. Yeah. Than uh, the impression, which would be the other alternative. Yeah. Um, it, it's very, very hot place. And I didn't want to um, cool the temperature by using a bluey green. Yeah. Thank you. Or a greeny blue, whatever. What paper did you use, Steve? This is um, Bockingford. Uh-huh. 
uh, straight up, just Bockingford, not not the rough. It's but it is not paper, um, which uh, which is in a block. Right. Since I've started doing these demonstrations, I've started to use blocks because it seems to hold the paper edges down easier. Uh, when I paint normally, I'm using sheets, and yeah. very very often I get a sort of eider down because of all the water that I'm uh, that I'm using uh, when I'm painting, and the block seems to resist that to some extent. It does um, cockle a bit, but nothing very serious. Mm -hmm. uh, the essential thing is to get these colours as bright as you can, so that when you get the dark in, they really sing out. The way to do that, Anne, is to use really dark darks when you get there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know about that, Anne, don't um, you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the colour on the left-hand side, when you said uh, you took some blue and you, yes, and you added a bit of something, was it the, um, the it, umber? Raw, Raw umber, yes. Yes. I added the raw umber. And it just yeah. greyed the blue a little bit. Yes. So it's okay. not bright like that. It's a, just good, a little bit greyer. Yes. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it, it's a fairly reduced palette. I've used uh, two yellows. One was uh, sienna and, and the other was uh, Indian yellow. The only green I've used is viridian. Uh, which I seem to want to do at the moment. Uh, the blue is ultramarine, and the other colour was the umber. So we've uh, we've still got quite a reduced palette that we're working on. Uh, and it really doesn't matter if it's pretty blodgy and splodgy at this stage. You'd be surprised how much difference it makes when we cut in to those areas with a really dark paint. And that's for next week. Um, uh, so there we are. That's right. the story. I think that is a great time to stop before we get cut off mid sentence, which has happened before now. Um, mm -hmm. So lovely to see you all, and I shall get this edited and uploaded as soon as I can. <laughs>